Today, we're doing 10 upgrades to a Newtonian telescope to make it better for astrophotography. Welcome to our observatory. Hi, I'm Rob. You may remember me from such YouTube videos as unboxing the Quattro 150P or reviewing the Quattro 150P. Today, we're going to drop our third installment in the series and complete the trilogy with 10 ways you can upgrade your Newtonian telescope featuring the Quattro 150P. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in order from the most essential to the most frivolous. And uh, I will admit up front that some of these would move a scope like this out of the budget category, but you're going to see that those particular upgrades are not the most essential. And this is not specific to the Quattro 150P. This applies to any Newtonian telescope. So let's go ahead, dive right in with number one, which is adding a fan. I've added this Asterion fan to the back of the newt. I picked it up from First Light Optics in the UK, and the purpose of fans on a mirrored telescope is usually to cool the mirror down to ambient temperature. But in my case, I use it to move air through the telescope in order to avoid dew condensing on the primary mirror. This works perfectly as long as it's on. If I turn it off for even a couple minutes, my mirror will fog up. I'll have to get a hairdryer to clear it off, and that results in a cleaning session because of that uh, condensate on the mirror. So this is an essential piece of kit here in the rainforest of the Pacific Northwest. This fan is always on. And here's a pro tip. If you're using the ASI Air, the 12 volt connections on it will actually keep this fan running even when it's shut down. So at the end of your Im imaging session, you shut down your ASI air, it parks the telescope, everything powers down, but those 12 volt ports stay powered. So the fan keeps running all the way through to the morning when you come outside to pack up and clean up, keeping your optics pristine that whole time. So uh, super cool that it works that way. Let's move along to number two, which is a collimator. So a collimator is something that helps you align the mirrors on your telescope. This is an absolutely essential piece of kit for a Newtonian reflector. In my case, I have the Hotec Laser Crosshair Collimator, and it gets the job done. It's super easy to do. However, it's not the cheapest tool out there. I recently picked up the Ocal Collimator. That also works super well. Um, so both of these devices work. But the main thing to keep in mind is that Newtonian telescopes do need constant collimation. So getting yourself a good tool to help make the job easier is uh, it's vital. It's definitely essential for a Newtonian telescope owner. If I were forced to choose between the two or other options on the market, I'd probably pick the Ocal just because you can use it with more than just Newtonian telescopes. You could use it on something like a uh, Schmidt Cassegrain, for example. So it's a more versatile tool for the money. Uh, so it gets my vote. Let's move on to number three, and that is replacing the spider veins, also known as the secondary mirror holder. The original veins that come with this telescope are really thin, and it's nice for reducing their impact within the image, but this also allows too much flex, and it's going to throw off your collimation. I love diffraction spikes, but mine were starting to get a little bit funky, as you can see here in this shot of the Orion Nebula. I was not happy with those stars at all, which is why I decided to upgrade. And this one is by Backyard Universe. You can find them at like Telescope Express, First Light Optics in the UK, and I think Star Arizona in the US sometimes has some of these in stock. It's a machined anodized aluminum. It's very solid. It holds your secondary mirror firmly in place, and it makes beautiful diffraction spikes, as we're going to see later. It's not essential, but I definitely think it's a worthy piece of upgrade kit. Um, and it goes hand in hand with our next upgrade at number four, the primary mirror mask. Again, this one's from the same brand, Backyard Universe, CNC machined aluminum. And what this does is mask out the three clips that hold your primary mirror in place. 
The reason you want to do this is to get nicer star shapes. You get little diffraction patterns from those three clips. This masks it out, gives you a nice round star. I'm always trying to make my stars better, so this one was a no-brainer. I think it's worth the money. Pro tip, don't over-tighten the clips that hold your primary mirror in place, or you're going to get what's known as pinched optics, which cause triangle stars. Now, I can't overstate this enough. It takes such little pressure on that mirror to distort the stars that even knowing this, when I went and installed this, I ended up with triangular stars. And I couldn't figure out if it was the mirror, if it was my back focus, because I had done so many upgrades all at once. And yes, I had over tightened my primary mirror. So uh, super essential to keep it very loose. You don't need any pressure on that mirror at all. But uh, I just wanted to reinforce that idea if you do, the, do this upgrade to keep them super loose. Why don't we take a quick break and look at an astrophoto that's taking advantage of these last few upgrades. Let's take a look at IC1396, the Elephant Trunk Nebula. So I think the stars came out super pretty in that image. The diffraction pattern from the spider veins is perfect. Chef's kiss. Ugh. This upgrade really makes me fall back in love with this telescope. And uh, why don't we express that love by giving it some more upgrades? You should send some of those upgrades my way. You can't upgrade perfection, Victor. I can't argue with that. I'm so sorry about that. That's Victor, my virtual intelligence construct for technological observation and research. And he's my new AI assistant, and he's going to be, uh, you know, giving me a hand around here. Speaking of hands, let's move on to number five, which is flocking. Flocking is adding a layer of dark textured material to reduce reflections off the inner surface of a telescope. This scope is not bad at all, has a very matte black paint inside, but it could use a little more contrast. So I stripped down the telescope, down to the tube, added flocking. In my case, I used some flock board from Protostar. It's really nice because you can just cut it to size and it unrolls inside the tube and creates this really nice um, velvet anti-reflective surface throughout the telescope. There are other methods that can get a little messy with glue and, um, you know, fabric. Or you could, you know, maybe do some paint, like a black 3.0, but the thought of paint chips inside my telescope did not sit well. This upgrade easily could have been higher up the list. It really depends on the state of your telescope. Um, I do highly recommend stripping down and flocking your newt. That sounded rather dirty. It sure did. Number six is a reducer corrector. Again, this could easily be number two or number three for some people. My telescope came with a very solid reducer corrector, taking this telescope from an f4 to an f3.45. But I am obsessed and speed is important to me, so I purchased the Star Arizona Nexus 0.75 reducer. This is completely superfluous, absolutely unnecessary. It takes my telescope from an f3.45 to an f3, which sounds like nothing. But in actuality, that's about a 45% improvement in light gathering ability. You know, that is not insignificant. So again, I don't recommend this to most users. It makes sense to me. Tons of light pollution, tons of bad weather where I live. So having a really fast telescope um, or two telescopes makes sense for me. But most people, not so much. I do want to add in a bonus here. This is, um, we're going to call it 6.5. And it is a compression ring. And this holds the coma corrector in place. The one that comes stock just has a screw and uh, it digs into the side of the coma corrector. This one has a nice compression ring inside. It allows a, a nicer tensioning around that coma corrector. So it's not going to fall out easily and it's not going to damage your beautiful new coma corrector that you just spent too much money on to go from f3.45 to f3. 
Let's go on to number seven, which is a secondary mirror heater. So I can't tell you for certain if this secondary heater is actually putting out enough heat to be doing the job. The fan at the back may be taking care of it. All I know is that I have had no problems with dew on the secondary, and it's probably due to this. I would recommend taking a look at the Kendrick Astro version of a secondary heater. It goes directly on the back of the secondary mirror instead of wrapping around the stock. It has very thin cables. I think it's a superior model and it puts the heat right where you want it. So if your secondary does do up at all, uh, you can get a secondary dew heater. It's going to do it. While we're on the subject, let's move on to a classic dew shield at number eight. A classic dew shield like this is going to help block stray light and, of course, as the name suggests, keep dew out of your OTA. This is just a generic 6-inch dew shield. It's just a velvet-lined plastic tube with a bit of Velcro that you wrap around. Super inexpensive, so if you have some stray light from the neighbors, if you have some dew getting into your OTA, a cheap way to help remedy those situations. In my case, this on its own wasn't keeping dew out of my scope. Hence, the secondary mirror warmer and the fan at the back. So I guess you could say it wasn't doing its job. You just lost 17 subscribers. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by Victor, is that uh, I still get due um, unless I run that fan and that mirror. So it's not enough. But depending on where you live, if you only get a little bit of dew, it may get the job done for you and it will block light. Okay, let's jump off to number nine, which is adding an off-axis guider. You're going to notice that I don't have an off-axis guider installed on my telescope, and that's because I actually had a pretty difficult time with this one. So if you are going to add an OAG to your telescope, get the one with the large prism. Do yourself a favor. The small prism OAG is not big enough to cover the sensor of a large guide camera. So you're not gonna get uh, full use of that big sensor. And then if you put a smaller sensor in, you're not gonna see enough guide stars. The field of view is too narrow. So you're gonna end up having to move the OAG in order to get stars hitting that sensor. It all just became a hassle for me. Uh, when it was working, it was guiding really well, but I didn't like having to fiddle with it. So I ended up going back to a classic guide scope and a guide cam. But in your situation, this might be the little extra sauce you need to get better guiding out of your setup, especially if you're at a long focal length. Okay, let's jump off to uh, number 10, and that is a telescope cover. So a telescope cover, like this Telegizmos 365, it lets you leave your scope outside for extended periods and be ready to go at a moment's notice. I have to bring my stuff up and down a steep, narrow flight of stairs. It's kind of treacherous. It's annoying, so when I got this cover, it was a game changer. I can leave my stuff out there for extended durations, not have to recall a make, because everything's nice and settled, and no balancing, no polar aligning, just ready to go. So definitely worth the investment, but again, it's a little bit pricey for what it is, and it's not essential, so it's at the end of our list. That's going to wrap up the 10 things you can do to upgrade your Newtonian, and yeah, I think it's worth it. I love my Newtonian. I love the Quattro 150P. I think it was worth all of these upgrades. I love the images I've been getting from it. Absolutely worth it. Whether it's worth it to you is uh, a matter of opinion. So for me, I think the most controversial of these would be that Star Arizona Nexus. It came with a coma corrector already that takes you down to f3.45. Going down to f3, questionable, but 45% increase and uh, I think it was fully worth it. So depending on your circumstances, you may or may not need any of these upgrades. For me, I have a lot of dew, I have a lot of light pollution, and I don't get a lot of time to image. So uh, all of these things were pretty much essential. And let's uh, look at an example of what we can do with this. This is a recent image I made of M45, the Pleiades, with an ASI 533MC Pro, that F3 reducer, an Optolong L Pro filter, and just four hours from here in the city in a Bortle 9 zone. <laughs> I 
Until next time, my friends, the stars belong to everyone. So get out there, see yourself.